Well guys, we have a bit of a situation with Tilly. <laughs> So I noticed a few days ago that Tilly was coughing and then it seemed like overnight she got worse and then she was wheezing. Tilly! <laughs> and I thought maybe because of the humidity she had some sort of cold or infection or something. It's funny because I was just saying that we never seem to get things like this like cold stuff or lung issues with our goats because we live in the desert. It's super arid here. No humidity at all, yeah. But it's humid now and I don't know, Tilly's struggling with something. So the vet came by and he listened to her lungs. She was pretty raspy. So we're starting her on some antibiotics, but she needs to be quarantined just as an extra little safety precaution in case it is contagious. This way we don't have to put masks on all the other goats. Yeah. So, well, well, look who's already waiting. Oh my goodness. All right, come on in. Tilly, come on, sweetie. Come in here. Bring Tilly and see if Winston follows. Oh yeah, he's gonna follow. <laughs> but she needs a friend back here. And so we decided the best friend for her would be Winston. <laughs> now, I know it seems like we're throwing him under the bus and that he might get sick now, but. He probably has it already. He's already, he's the one that's around her all the time yeah, anyway. So <laughs> we're just gonna let him take one for the team and keep her company, which he wants to do anyway. And hopefully he doesn't get sick. Hopefully it's not contagious. The vet and I don't think it's contagious because none of the other goats have acted sick at all, but this is what we're gonna do. Salem's gonna give him a little kiss. They get to share a tree branch together. So romantic. <laughs> Look, Tilly's two daughters are like, Mom, you guys are old enough. You're old enough to be on your own. You don't need your mama with you. So we need to leave Tilly in here for just about a week. We're gonna give her some antibiotics and some garlic for immune support and hopefully she gets better. All right. Good job, Tilly. That was fast. Good job. Did it. Welcome to the next installment of building our pizza oven. Okay, Kevin, we've got it figured out. Yep. We're good. Just gotta decide where the countertop goes next to it. You guys, I should win an award for this. I had the idea to use our old igloo for a form mold for our pizza oven. The plan is to use this with our concrete mud as a form to have the perfect shape. Okay, that looks good. <laughs> I think that's the perfect size. Now the question is, do we build the form on the inside or the outside of that? That's the tricky part. All right, done. That's the final spot, guys. It took us a lot of different discussions, but we realized that because we live in a hot climate, it's better to have the pizza oven further away from the house. When we use the pizza oven, it'll probably be a little bit cooler times, right? Oh, yeah. But it, we still don't want all that heat. So we plan to build an outdoor kitchen right here, and then we'll have a table right here where we eat or up on the deck but this this is the outdoor kitchen spot so you won Kevin Perfect. <laughs> I think it'll be good it's not gonna be that massive of a thing it's not gonna block our view entirely and we're gonna put a little sink out here so we can wash our hands on a little countertop and then of course the oven so Kevin just finished doing the flagstone today so we start with the foundation and then we build up a stand for it and then we start on the oven. So perfect time of year to be doing this. It's yeah. not it's not warm at all. Yeah, <laughs> it is fig season. 
and you know me you guys I love figs it just seems like we can't eat them fast enough there are so many coming off this little tree or bush that we've been trying to dehydrate them eat them fresh but today since we're talking about pizzas I've decided to use my figs in a homemade pizza we're gonna deviate from the standard red sauce pepperoni pizza and we're gonna make something truly amazing we'll start off by making some garlic butter that is key to this and it's really going to be used as our sauce. Then I'm going to chop up a little bit of shallots and we'll get those caramelizing. And next we'll cut these beautiful figs in half. I have a pizza dough recipe. It's really simple. And the way we're going to layer this up is different than probably you've ever done. We're going to put garlic butter on the bottom, some mozzarella cheese, next those caramelized onions and the figs. We'll add a little bit of fresh mozzarella cheese because that's just, that's what you need on pizza. And then we'll bake it. After it's done cooking, we're gonna drizzle on some balsamic vinegar and some fresh thyme from the garden. And oh my gosh, you guys, this was amazing. Probably my favorite type of pizza. The only problem is, is whenever I cook pizza in the oven, it always turns out a little bit blonde. So that's exactly why we're getting started on our outdoor pizza oven so we can make the perfect dough when we make homemade pizza. Salem, let's go. Okay, watch, when I let Salem out, all the chickens follow her, watch. First she has to say hi to all the goats and she like licks, she licks Elsa, <laughs> she licks her head, and then she goes and she tries to give kisses to the goats. But watch, wait, she'll run off into the yard and all the chickens. There she goes and they all follow her. <laughs> She's like, what the heck? <laughs> they think she has the food. Yeah, they think she has food. Come on, Fern. Only Fern, only Fern. Not you, Willow. Okay, what's your opinion? Is Fern pregnant? We're not gonna find out for a few weeks, but I'm thinking that she is. And little Tatum here. Do we think that she's pregnant? No, she's not gonna show yet. It's way too early for that. What we're looking for in both Fern and Tatum is to see if they're gonna come back into heat. That's gonna be our very first sign. And if they do, then they're not pregnant and we'll put them back with Zorro. But they should go into heat any day now if they're going to, and I haven't seen it yet. So, pretty excited about them being pregnant. Tilly, it's time to be milked, come on. <laughs> How'd you guys do in here? I know Winston, he doesn't want her to leave. Come on, you gotta go get milked real quick, okay? All right, have a good milking. Oh, now he's gonna freak out. Tilly's always gotta come and rub herself along the back of this chicken coop and then she'll go that way. Okay, go get milked now, okay? Okay. Now we're still milking Tilly even though she's sick right now because if we let her milk build up then she would just uh, be really un really uncomfortable. But we are not keeping the milk so we're gonna toss it just to be safe. Lydia hates this time of year because the mosquitoes come out and they love her. Bad. I'm sorry. You doing okay Tilly? We are not used to this humidity, so we don't do very well. We get the mosquitoes that come out. Tilly gets some kind of sickness. We're used to a dry heat here. Okay, Winston. She's back. Oh, Aww, she's back. All is well. Honey, look. Salem keeps trying to win over those geese. <laughs> she tries to get up to them where they'll let her like sniff them and stuff. And then they chase her away, it's so funny. She wants to be able to lick them too. Gotta be able to lick stuff. Hi 
Hi, Luna. She doesn't like the camera. But you're so pretty. <laughs> Hi, Winnie. It's so hard to get footage of these two because they always run up to me, try to chew on me. <laughs> it's so hard. You guys always want attention, don't you? Maybe if I run over here. <laughs> They're right by me. There you go. You're finally playing on your toy. Well, these babies. I think they're pretty much ready to be let out. They're gonna hit six months in just a few weeks. I think they're ready. They're getting along pretty well, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah, they don't seem to fight that much. Only a little bit. I think Napoleon is the boss. You think he's the boss? I don't think so. Hi. I can't believe how friendly he is yeah. compared to how scared he was at first. Yeah. Good job, Napoleon. Afterwards, yeah, she runs back to the pond. It's so hot. Go get your drink. There she goes. She's gonna go all the way over and get a big drink of water. These Amish paste tomatoes that I started as seedlings all the way back in January have been giving fruit for the last couple months. And I've been gathering them up, guys, because today we're gonna do some canning. We ate so many fresh tomatoes this summer that we don't really have a lot left, but just enough, I think, to make a few cans. So first I'll make sure and separate the good from the bad and then we'll score the top. When you're canning tomatoes, you have to sort of blanch them first so you can get the skins off of them. So they'll just boil for about a minute, then we take them out and start skinning and prepping. We'll dice the tomatoes and make sure to save as much of the juice as possible, and then I'll just raw pack them. So I just put them in a jar along with a couple tablespoons of lemon juice so that we can keep the acidity high, and then I'll throw them in my handy little canner and pressure can them. The end result are these perfectly preserved summer tomatoes that we're probably going to eat really fast. <laughs> but they make the perfect sauces for pasta or pizza. So I'm going to wait and I'm going to use these for a pizza sauce when our pizza oven is done. Step one. Don't write on this form. Step two, wash and dry your hands. I got the comb. Comb. Kevin, I got the tweezers. Step three, sample coarse longer hair from chest rump or tail. <laughs> rump? Rump. Okay, let's do rump. Rump's easier. Oh, that would be. Son of a, Kevin. Dad, you're supposed to. We're supposed to clean it first. Oh. We're supposed to clean it. <clears throat> clean the sample area by removing all loose hair and foreign matter. All right, guys. So I'm editing the video, and I realized that we did not include an explanation of what we're doing here. So we are taking samples of hair from the bucks to DNA test them. It's something that you do in the goat registration world to help secure paternity and you know bloodlines. So it's just something nice to have on file for their registration. It's something that I've been meaning to do. And so today we finally did it. <laughs> and um, yeah, this is how it went. All right, well dad just ripped out 20 hairs with Hold no on. warning. Okay. It was only three hairs. Pull, do not cut. 20 to 40 hairs. Oh my gosh. Strands 20 to 40. Total. Aww. Poor Zoro. About five. in the same area too. About five. <laughs> He's got like a bald spot. About five. Yeah, grasp hair close to skin and pull in one swift downward motion. You think that's enough? Yeah. It doesn't look like enough. Let's see. All right, time to do a little Napoleon. I know, you're gonna be difficult. 
And the final reward is that Napoleon Zorro. <laughs> Napoleon gets a new collar. Right. I don't know if it's the right size. Oh, you look so good. Got to fix it. The one thing Winston hates is when I give Tilly her shot. Yeah. He does not like me messing with her. Watch. <laughs> I know. It's okay. Okay. Tilly's such a good patient. Well done. She has patience. Last patient. one. Tilly seems to be doing a lot better. She um, She's not coughing as much, so I'm hoping that this one little round of antibiotics is enough for her to feel good and be back with the herd soon. And so far, Winston hasn't acted sick at all, so I don't think it's contagious. He's good medicine. All right, guys, thanks for watching today's video. We're ending this video on a beautiful, rainy day. We're so excited. More humidity, but it's worth it. Since this video is about Tilly, you can go watch the video about mm, two years ago where she broke her leg. Tilly's had an adventurous life. <laughs>